And Fun Master Mike is back on the YouTube airwaves for Chess Kit with another edition of Guess the Elo. This is where I show you a pretty cool chess game. And then at the end, you try to guess the rating of the player. We're going to focus on the white player. And by the way, I've got a special treat for you by telling you who the white player is, as well as the rating. You won't be able to guess the player, but you're trying to guess the rating. Off we go. After the move e4, black played the move c5. And after knight f3, d6, white goes for the big one and plays the open Sicilian, something that Fun Master Mike is not brave enough to do. And after takes and takes, we get to a very theoretical line because after a6, Nidorf, bishop to g5, e6, f4, this is the position I wanted to show you because black played the very controversial but hmm. very interesting move, queen to b6. And then white says, I'm not going to guard my pawn. And if you've seen the chess kid video on poisoned pawn, well, this is actually an open question. Is this pawn hmm. poisoned or not? In fact, many grandmasters have had this exact position and many grandmasters have taken the pawn. Some have lived to tell the tale, some have not. So white plays queen d2 and says, please take my pawn. And black says, yum, 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 yum. Oh. Give me that pawn. Okay, the theme of this game really is that this queen is struggling to get back in the game. If the queen gets back in the game, black is often totally fine. But if white can keep the queen away from the action, it's almost like black is playing down nine points. So the rook moves to b1, might as well activate and kick the queen out of there. Queen moves to a3. Now in this position, if you're white, you're down a pawn. You do not want to let black just catch up in development. So white should go after black right away. In fact, this move f5 is very interesting, pressuring the e6 pawn. The bishop could even join the attack on that pawn. And if black tries to close the center, then the game gets really different because white will just move the knight probably back to b3 and white will enjoy the backward pawn and this outpost for the rest of the game. In fact, white sometimes will even take this knight before saving this knight just to make sure that this outpost is his forever. But let's go back. Instead, white played another advance, which I don't know if it's as good, but it sure is more interesting. Pawn to e5, blowing open the center in this fashion. Now black oh. took, white took back, and the knight ran away to d7 to oh. pressure this pawn. And white decides to give another pawn by playing knight e4 and just allowing the pawn to get captured. But the knight is eyeballing certain squares like this one and sometimes even this one. Now something fascinating would have happened if white had played a move like bishop to e2 to get ready to castle. In case of bishop to e2, what would have happened if the knight had captured the pawn? Well, then we would have had complete mass hysteria. Some of you are noticing that if the queen could jump Hello. over her own knight and land on d8, we would have kind of like a morphy mate. So the strongest move is to sacrifice the knight. And the threat, of course, is queen to d8 mate. Also, knight c7 mate. Okay, not bad. <laughs> not even a fork, it's just mate. Now the problem, if you want to call it a problem, is that black could take, but it's not really a problem because now when we give check, the king has to come on a walk. And some of you are noticing you can even castle with check, which is the best move. Now, white actually still has to play really carefully because if the king walks out, there are various mates in three. And if you want an extra big challenge, you could pause your video and try to find them. But if you didn't pause, a warning, I'm about to give you one of the mates in three. Coming up, three, two, one. If you said queen e8, I'll give you full credit, but we're not gonna look at that one. We're gonna look at the fancier one. Rook to f6. Now, if you take the rook, I just take back oh. and it's just mate right there. It's actually mate in two. So the best move is to take, but that actually allows white to play this move knight e4 check. You only have one king move, which is to go here. And then we play the really, really nasty rook f4 yeah. mate or rook h6 mate. Both of them are double check mate. Look at this queen oh. coming back to check the king, double check. And the rule in double check is you have to move your king to get out of both checks and there are no king moves. Ergo, ipso facto, it is checkmate. So if we go back to this position, after castles, if black does not come on a walk ski and black's king moves back, notice there's a lot of pressure on this bishop. But if you're white, you don't want to just go taking your piece back because if you do, then the queen comes back into the fold, as I mentioned, checking the king, and that effectively trades queens. And most of the attack is over. In fact, black's probably okay. So if you're white, you have to find a diabolical move in this position. Amazingly, there's only one winning move for white. Hmm. And if you find it, 
frankly, I should be doing your game next on Guess the Elo. It's knight to d5. Yeah, that's hard to find. Knight e7 is the threat, and black would actually have to give away the queen just to not get mated, although that's still not going to lead to anything good for black. And if black takes, then we totally switch the attack to the diagonal. Queen takes is mate in a couple of moves. Once black gets done putting some minor pieces in the way, it's going to be mate. Okay, so things would have gotten totally crazy if white had played bishop to e2 and allowed the pawn to get captured. Instead, white played this move knight to e4, still allowing the pawn to get captured, but it's still not a good move for various reasons that I've already sort of shown you with various checkmates and d8. So uh, we're not going to cover it again. Instead, black played h6. Black's like, I don't want this bishop lined up with d8 anymore. I don't want my king unable to move. But of course, white is too smart for that. And white brings the bishop back to h4 to make sure that this king still has the seatbelt across his chest and he's not going anywhere. So black develops and guards some of those dark squares. But white, of course, just wants to get rid of the knight. White does not want black to guard these squares. Okay, the pawn takes back. Now we're already close to a sort of checkmate pattern. If white could just get the knight to this square, check. The only legal move would be bishop takes. And then if white could play queen takes, it's going to be checkmate on e7. The problem is this queen continues to guard that square. And whenever black can trade queens, black is going to feel like the worst is behind him. So white plays bishop to e2, getting ready to castle and enter the attack with this rook. And black plays the move queen to a4. Now you might say, hey, 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 fun master, the queen's not guarding that square anymore. So now white can play check, take, Take and give mate, except that the queen runs all the way over and takes your bishop with check. Wah, wah, wah. So that was the point of this queen coming to a4. She wants to take one of these pieces, but look at white's move. Pawn c4, sealing the queen on the side of the board. This pawn keeps the queen from being able to do anything active and getting back in the game. A really, really nice sparkling move. Now black plays g5. Black does not want that bishop on the diagonal anymore. And finally, the bishop has to run away. Okay, black plays the move bishop to c5 in this position to stop white from castling. Now, I do want to mention that at any moment, if white goes back to this idea and plays a move like check, then black can take. And when white takes back, then black will give a quick little check with the queen, and then the queen will slide over and offer a trade, and white's queen will probably have to back up. So just keep an eye on that idea. It is a key idea. So instead, white decides, well, if I can't castle, I'm going to play h4 and activate my rook this way. Okay, now black really wants to keep some files close, so black plays g4. But look at this nifty little move. Pawn to h5, reopening, re-clearing <laughs> uh, the bishop's ability to get back to its magical diagonal. Okay, the queen comes back to a3, because frankly, what else was black supposed to do? Black barely had any other moves, and black wants to make sure that if this knight moves, the queen can activate. The queen would actually take the bishop with check. So, white plays rook b3, sealing the queen off again. A gain, as some people say. So the queen goes back to a4, and now the bishop goes to its magical square. Okay, black played bishop f8, not really sure what else black was supposed to try. Keep in mind, you still can't play the check, because after takes and takes, you've already shown this idea. Black will give a quick check, and then the queen will come over to c5, and black will actually do x-ray defense on the checkmate on u7. So white shows great patience here and just castles. Just get the king off of that possible checking square. That's one reason to castle, okay? So black plays the move rook to g8. What else to do? Not sure. And finally, here comes the concluding move. Knight to d6 check. Black, of course, must take. And after queen takes, now the queen, she can't move like a knight to get to c5, which means this checkmate is a big deal. And black plays desperation move, rook to g5. Wouldn't it be cool if white could take en passant? Yeah, take the rook en passant, that would be pretty cool. But uh, as much power as I have on chess kid, I'm not allowed to break the rules in our server. They don't give me those credentials. So instead, white simply takes. Black takes back, and not only did white win the exchange, but now the pawn is ollie ollie oxen free, and black just has no pieces anywhere close to that pawn to really be able to deal with it. Again, look at this poor queen. She won a pawn, congratulations. She also basically put herself in a little prison for the rest of the game. Okay, the knight moves to f8. The knight is able to at least stop the pawn from going to h7, but now the d file's open. Rook to d3, remember our old friend, queen to d8 mate? Queen to d8 mate's coming. 
Black stops it for a moment, but that loses the c6 pawn. Bishop blocks, the rook is captured with check, and it is pretty close to mate. Black is losing a whole bunch of points, and white is already up a rook. Okay, I was impressed by the game, but here's the big question. What is the rating of the player who played white? After such an impressive game, I think I have a general idea of what kind of number you're gonna pick. All right, did you guess 1500? You're too low. 1600? Too low. 1800? You're too low. 2400? You're too high. 2000? Ding, 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 ding. The correct answer was actually exactly 2020. Remember that year? Yeah, some funny stuff happened in that year. But the rating of 2020 was the exact right answer. And now the other big reveal, the game was the best game ever played by WFM Kinga Pollock. And some of you might know, Kinga is actually one of our main TikTok creators, YouTube short creators, and we wanted to show her some love and show off her best game. She played this when she was playing in an under 14 tournament. So pretty high rating and pretty impressive play from someone so young. All right, I hope you enjoyed Guess the Elo. Hope you enjoyed Kinga's best game. And we'll see you on Chess Kid next time.